Beside me I have Gigabyte's new RTX 2080 and 2070 Extremes. These are impressive, high-end and also quite expensive new graphics cards and in this video we're going to talk about the spec, a tour of the cards and the aesthetic choices they've made as well as obviously the performance of them and if they're worth your money. So starting off with the spec of the cards, the 2080 has the standard 2944 CUDA cores, you have 8GB of GDR6 VRAM and in terms of its clock speed it's fairly standard across the, the boost clock board right now at 1890. You also have 14,140 effective megahertz uh, for clock uh, for memory clock speed, uh, and that is kind of the, the main spec for that. The 2070 has again standard 2,304 CUDA cores, 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM, and you have uh, actually a lower uh, boost clock of 1815 with a slightly higher uh, memory clock by 2 megahertz of 14,142. Now the reason that the boost clocks for the 2080 and 2070 are basically identical to everyone else on the market right now isn't that that's the best that these chips can do, it's that NVIDIA is still factory locking uh, their AIBs or their partners from uh, doing factory overclock cards. They're basically not allowing them to do anything more than about 1890 on the 2080 side and about that 1820-ish side for the 2070s, so you're not really going to find much higher on the market anywhere right now, and it's my understanding that there will be a second set of cards that will still be labelled 2080s and 2070s, but will be able to be factory overclocked, and so maybe a little bit faster than these. Now that's the spec out of the way, let's take a look at the cards themselves. The only difference between the cards are the power connectors at the back, with the 2070 having a 6 and an 8 pin, whereas the 2080 has two 8 pins. Otherwise they are absolutely identical, so if you only see one card in the picture, uh, or the, the B-roll here, then you're, uh, you can expect that that is something that I'm talking about for both cards. Now with that said, they have a really interesting cooler design, it's similar to the last gen but a slight bit more angular if you like, and actually the most interesting thing about the new cooler design is the RGB fan tips. This is something that most people probably don't care that much about, but if you want an all out RGB card then you've got RGB on the side, the little fan stop logo, and on all of the fans as well, which make it a very very nice aesthetic option if you like kind of bright and gaudy RGB. I just remember there is actually one other difference with the 2080 and 2070 which is that the 2080 has the NVLink SLI finger type thing whereas the 2070 actually doesn't, it's completely gone, it's now just a very big kind of obtruse PCB sticking out the side and while I would like to see them shave it down overall it's kind of a surprising thing but also not so surprising that Nvidia is locking out you know SLI on the lower tier card and really reserving it for if you want to spend the most money possible then you can but otherwise it's really not worth it on the lower end and that's something that I've been saying for many years but um, it's now just physically not possible on the 2070s. The rear IO on these cards is actually pretty interesting. I'll give you a rundown of what's there first and then talk about what it all means and why it's there. So first of all you've got three DisplayPort ports and then three HDMI ports as well as one USB Type-C port. Now the reason that that Type-C port there is that's NVIDIA's new Virtual Link connector. It's basically a DisplayPort port that happens to also be able to run uh, USB protocols and power over it, which means that in theory, next generation VR headsets will be able to have one single cable from your graphics card and power and data and video all through one cable. Now the extra connectors there, the extra two DisplayPorts and extra two HDMI ports, those are actually pretty interesting. Now normally you would have, I think, three DisplayPorts and one HDMI port, but they've essentially added two extra HDMI ports in that sort of hourglass shape uh, kind of outline there, um, connected to the two display ports, which basically means you can either use three display ports and an HDMI, or you can use three HDMIs and one display port. It's definitely one or the other, but it does mean that you have more flexibility if you say you want to only use HDMI or only use display ports. So now that you know the spec of the cards and have had a tour of them, I think it's time to talk about the performance. Let's jump into that. Starting off with 3D Mark Firestrike, you can see that, especially at 1080p, these are pretty similar. You're generally going to be CPU bound more than anything. 1440p is a bit kind of more separated, and then 4K is where you see the biggest separation, with the 2080 being a good bit ahead. In terms of Unigen Heaven, again, we see similar results. About 40 FPS difference at 1080p, whereas about 21 FPS difference at 1440p, and then actually down to 10 FPS difference at 4K, although Heaven's a bit funny at 4K. 
GTA 5 uh, had a few issues between 1080p and 1440p, so there's really not much difference between the 1440p and 1080 results, but the 4K numbers look fairly solid here, what you'd expect. Uh, from uh, very high settings at 4k. In terms of Dirt Rally on Ultra settings, again we're looking at some pretty decent and pretty fast results for both the 2080 and the 2070, and especially the 2080 with 89 FPS at 4k, that's always good to see. In terms of player known as Battlegrounds tested on Sanok, we have some again pretty impressive results for Ultra settings, and of course you can turn down some of the settings, especially for Pub if you want to, and even at 4k both of these cards still do pretty well. Same story with Fortnite, obviously the same engine as Pub PUBG and generally just a great experience, very smooth at 1080p and 1440p and still pretty good at 4k as well so that's always good to see especially epic settings. So as you'd expect the 2080 is just an incredible card. It does a great job at handling 4k 60fps games uh, especially at very high and ultra settings which means that this could be a great card for well, 4k 60 but also into the future as well. Of course if you want some you know high refresh rate 1440p or you know ultra high refresh fresh rate uh, 1080p monitors then that's where you want to head for that one and then the 2070 is still a great card still performs really well that's more to do that you know you're looking more at 1440p and 1080p there but it can still handle 4k if you fancy it on the price to performance side of things though that's where it gets a bit more difficult to recommend them the fact that they were essentially the same performance level for the same price as the last generation so 1080 to 2070 for the well 2070 and 1080i to 2080 there it's kind of it's just a lot harder to recommend yes they've got nice coolers yes they both do great in terms of performance especially in 1440p and 4k but the fact that these cards are as I said essentially the same level of performance we got last gen for the same price if not more expensive than last gen just makes it a bit of a shame and a bit harder to recommend especially considering that there are a lot of deals for last gen cards available right now and from what I've seen in some places you can get a 1080 Ti for 2070 kind of money which seems like a no-brainer to me. With that said though, these cards specifically are impressive. The coolers do a great job of keeping both of them cool and fairly quiet and of course if you like that bright RGB aesthetic then these are definitely the ones for you. You also get a nice addition of a GPU support stand in the box for both of the extreme cards because they are a little bit on the heavy side so that is nice to see as well and it just gives you a little bit you know kind of experience of a, a premium product. Um, so overall if you're desperate for a 2080 or 2070 I do recommend these but overall I can't massively recommend them. Of course the question I ask in all of these reviews is would I put these in my rig? So for the 2080 it's similar to the Zotac 2080 I reviewed on launch or close to launch anyway um, I would probably say that I would rather get a 1080 Ti so no Specifically, if I'm talking about just the, the Gigabyte version of a 2080, so I was going to buy a 2080 and would I put this one in my rig? I would say yes, um, but overall, generally 2080s can't highly recommend. Uh, and similar story for the, the 2070 actually, it's a bit closer. I would probably be happier to put a 2070 than a 1080 in my rig, but again, that's a, a quite a close call. So. Um, we kind of leave that one up to you as well. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Would you pick up either of these instead of a 10 series card? Do you prefer the future proofness of having ray tracing available or are you just you know impressed with the performance? Does the Gigabyte card specifically stand out to you? All of that stuff, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to pick up either of these cards or check out pricing when and where you watch this, I'll leave links to both of them in the description down below. Those will be the top links for you. You can check them out there. Of course, if you want to support the channel keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, then take a look at the links in the description down below. There's Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links which both massively help me out, don't cost you anything but I'm really grateful for those who uh, use it and I'm also really grateful for my patrons. Thank you to you guys for again supporting the channel and if you want to become one and get some cool rewards for doing so, then you can check out the link down there too. There's also private internet access which is a great and cheap VPN, Humble Bundle if you want some cheap games and a load of other stuff down there too including merch if you want a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or non-taped text image related designs of course if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button check out the other videos over there and if you've got any questions leave them in the comments down below otherwise thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video